So if you look at the back at the whole picture, you say, well, what are we talking about? The idea of universal physical principles is an idea that belongs to the universe, not to a biological process on Earth. And when you, you have to look at this process on Earth and the role of biology in the history, but then you have to look at one very particular thing. The key to what is the meaning of life is the fire bringer. Mankind as the fire bringer. These, and that all species depend upon fire bringing. The rays of the energy flux density per capita and per square kilometer across, you know, as, per square uh, area of surface. That intensity, we've gone to higher orders of fire. And wherever you see a fireplace, no matter how ancient, with charcoal and signs of human presence, there you were seeing humanity, a creature which is distinct from all other known forms of life. Life as exists, but life really belongs as a treasure given to mankind, like fire. And mankind will outlive, if we do the right thing, mankind will outlive the sun which we're told will be gone within two billion years from now. And certainly the conditions are going to be bad, and I don't think that a billion years or even a few hundred million years are safe for mankind. But if mankind were to do something strange, like progressing with higher energy flux densities and so forth, which man does when man is behaving itself, then I think we find that the rate of increase of energy flux density that man will be able to wield as, we, as we're now struggling to cross the barrier of putting man on Mars, which probably could be, happen about, say, a, a century from now or less, huh? or generation even, by we, the thermonuclear fusion drives based on set, sending things from Mars, from Earth, or the moon rather, and you've got them down in holes in the moon because you're not safe to live, live on the surface there. And you get, with thermal fusion, you can get into Mars within a week. You could carry man to Mars within a week. And by the technology that involves means that we, we have to do some problems with biology, deal with them. But mankind could be on Earth, on Mars. And if mankind continues to progress, accelerates our progress, the time will come within this universe which when the sun is gone, man, if we behave ourselves, will be there. And that's the mission, is that conception of mankind that's needed. That we, it's not, we don't go from sense perception as such to, into progress. We go through the, pro, the capability of creativity, which is intrinsic to life, but only creativity, human creativity, is different. Human creativity is able to change the universe. It's that kind of creativity. And that's the counterpose. We have to take these, take the evidence, lay the practical evidence out. But when you come to the bottom of the line of this thing, that's what the truth is. That mankind is unique. It's the only creature we have any indication of in the universe which is capable of doing this. The only kind species that we know of could do what is done with fire and forms of fire. What we can do with the exploration of space, we're now going into a, a period in which going into space, and we will laugh at the idiots who said you know, that you could deduce, you could deduce uh, the universe from mathematics or so forth. And we're going to a point that mankind has, got, has a potential great future. And our job is don't worry about it. Just do it. Follow your nose. Make the progress. Huh? And mankind will, instead of being seen as odd balls who were born to die, mankind will be defined as a species, which by progressing is by its development Mankind as a species is potentially an immortal species. And there's no other species we know of which is that. 
Individual persons will die, but they don't, they're not dead. They're just used up in their present incarnation. And the, with the continuity of development of the human mind across generations, successive generations, which is our mission. Our mission is that any life that doesn't progress is a wasted life, a human life. Every human life must make progress, must participate in the process of progress in the, in the meaning, the existence of mankind. And we're going now to the point, Mars. Mars is man's immediate objective for practical reasons, in order to protect people on Earth. We've got to get out there and interfere with some of these rocks and things that are flying around in between the Mars orbit. And that's what it means. And once you think in those terms, which are all existing scientific terms, all known knowledge, and you take into account the idiocy of what people are taught to believe in universities and so forth today on this account, it's all clear. And you just require people to think that way. And we, we, one of the first things we should do is kick Obama out of the White House, restore the, uh, the space program, which is what we have to do if we're going to solve these problems and understand these things, and go ahead and, and deal with the fact that we are facing a, well, a billion years or so or something like that. We're going to have a great catastrophe in the solar system. We're probably by getting some signs of it already. And mankind is going to have to adapt and increase its power in order to control that kind of process. And what we're seeing with the, the capability, which is recent now, in history, that we now are able to colonize Mars by machines that we control. And at a later point, with thermonuclear fusion, matter-antimatter reactions, systems controlled, we'll be able to do more. So the point is that people have to live as people. They have to progress qualitatively as species in this, pro in this mode except each generation accepts a greater challenge than the previous one had known, and just go do it and say that the mission is somehow embedded in what we're doing. Why do we do this? Because the mission is embedded in us if we, if we face the truth about what we are. And that's what's important. And the music is important because without that, if you're not doing that, you really didn't get the message. <laughs> and you're not, mankind is not going to make it unless mankind is capable of doing that. That is the most characteristic meaning of human communication is the mode of communication itself. It's not what you communicate. It's the mode by which you communicate and by the way this progress occurs as communication. And to abuse that, to substitute something for that, is a crime against humanity. It's a, probably a crime against the commit, commit, you know, creator, too, you know? <laughs> no, as you're saying, it's also the basis of, of public stupidity today. And the fact that, as opposed to what you demonstrate with what you're doing in the political mission and everything else, I mean, history is a creative act. It's not something which is just ticking away on a timeline where, you know, events that are going on around you just somehow add up to some effect. It's a creative action. It's man visualizing his future as reality and bringing it into being as a, as a composition. Now the problem is when you have the attack on the culture as you're bringing up, people lose a connection in, to the ability to think in that way and, and they lose the connection of their identity, of, that being their, of their identity being in that future because they've lost a sense of the reality of that future. That's the point is science, by killing science, they were able to do that. This is the way it worked, if you take science in the large, in the, mm -hmm. the, the total. Yeah, that's exactly it. And this, the enemy is the oligarchical system. And the chances of humanity surviving, if the British Empire, which still does exist as an empire, if that exi continues to exist, mankind may become extinct. And the thermonuclear warfare, which is lurking right out there now, represents fully the capability of the extinction of the human species, probably an act, on an act occurring in an hour and a half.
And therefore, people who are not serious about this matter may find themselves not at all, being not at all, and not knowing, not even knowing that. But with this thermonuclear nuclear warfare involving the United States will mean a virtual extinction event. It may not come as a, a total extinction at once, but when you think about what the atmosphere is going to be like after a full-throated launch for only an hour and a half, and the conditions on the planet will probably doom or threaten to ex extinguish mankind's existence in short order within a short period of time. And yet these damn fools are still tolerating an Obama, who's nothing but a stooge of the British, and it's only what you're seeing right now, as you're seeing in, in Israel right now, being sucked into this role. Huh? This thing is a threat to the existence of mankind and idiots. Well, the other thing you have to consider, though, is guess who won the last election, presidential election? The drug dealers. The greatest part of the greatest part of the vote cast in the last U.S. election, the margin of votes was done by the druggies and by the institutions that are the drug peddlers. And if you don't get rid of the drug, drug peddling, which is done by Obama and by the people who fund him, you're not going to have a human race. We're in a situation where mankind, with all the potential we represent as a species, can be virtually made, rendered extinct by the Queen of England and Obama, her stooge. So this is, the, this is what it's all about, that we have a wonderful thing given to us. And the experience of getting into Mars now, as far as we've gone, demonstrates that we're on the road toward reaching that kind of goal, a next step up for mankind in the solar system. And we should be doing that. But the point is, we can lose it. And the fight for these things we've just been discussing, presenting today on the question of art, is, is exactly what is required to ensure that mankind saves the opportunity for mankind to realize our, our mission in existence. And to therefore take everything that is classical artistic composition, render it precious, mm -hmm. assure its delivery, assure that more and more young children begin to get it and time to get a start on life. And get this bunk, this junk out of here. We've got to save mankind. That's our mission. We've got to remove things that are a threat to the continued existence of mankind. That's what we know. Everything else is a deduction. 